Honestly, woman, I am still the park hero around here. Which reminds me, why haven't you asked me out on a date? Oh. Did you see the idiom? Stay hard, Scrabble. If we get back into the scary program, I hope there's no hard feelings. How about that time? There were idiomatic phrases in both of those clips. That's what our channel is all about. Idiomatic phrases. We go back and forth, constantly searching for the best material to help you understand idioms, phrasal verbs, slang, and other idiomatic phrases. However, some of our viewers have expressed frustration. They don't like having to search through videos trying to locate specific phrases that they're interested in. So we have come up with a solution. To release a series of videos consolidating these phrases. This video is the second video in the series. The phrases presented in this video will be from number 51 to number 100. If you haven't already done so, you can view the first 50 phrases that we presented in a video that we previously uploaded. We hope you enjoy these group videos. Let's get started. Here is the index of phrases for this group 2 video. Great! Now let's start analyzing idiomatic phrases. Great! The name of this phrase is, cut down on. The meaning of this phrase is, to do or use less of something. An example of this phrase is, Sissy and I have learned that by giving each other a bath at the same time we can cut down on the time spent bathing. This means that by cleaning each other, they can reduce the time they spend washing. Another example of this phrase is, I've recently learned that by taking the bypass, I can cut down on the time it takes me to drive my boss to work. This means that by using a new way to go to work, I can reduce the time spent driving to the office. The last example of this phrase is, my wife and I have found that by doing our food shopping on Monday mornings, we can cut down on our food costs and cut down on the time we spend shopping. This means that by shopping on Monday mornings, we can reduce the money we spend on food and reduce the time spent shopping. To summarize, cut down on is to reduce the amount of doing something. Excellent! Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Where are we going to have dinner? Yeah, any, any, anywhere you say. Uh, Chinese, Italian. You mean a restaurant, the four of us. Yeah, it'll cost a fortune. We'll cut down on laundry. We don't wear socks on Thursday. We can't afford restaurants. We'll eat here. Here? Yeah. In this clip, Felix is worrying about the date that he and Oscar have the next day with two women. He asks Oscar where they will eat. Oscar says that anywhere is okay with him. Chinese, Italian food, any place is okay. Felix says that eating at a restaurant is too expensive. Oscar says that they can cut down on laundry expenses. Oscar is saying that if they spend less money on doing laundry, they will have enough money to go to a restaurant. I'll have the usual. Bourbon and uh, water. Oh, a bourbon man. I gotta cut down on my drinking. I'm beginning to put away a quarter a day. In this clip, Alan is on a first date with a woman, Sharon. Alan is very nervous and willing to say anything to impress Sharon. When talking about having a drink, Alan says that he needs to cut down on drinking alcohol. Alan is saying that he needs to reduce the amount of alcohol he is drinking. The alcohol that he says he drinks is bourbon and that recently, he has been drinking a quart each day. Of course, Alan is lying. He doesn't drink bourbon and has never drank a quart each day. 
kitchen. It's a dream come true for any cook. Just filled with positive energy, huh? And you'll be surprised how much a ceiling fan can cut down on your energy costs. In this clip, Carolyn, a real estate broker, is trying to convince people into buying this home. She tells the people looking at the house that having a ceiling fan will cut down on energy costs. Carolyn is saying that using a ceiling fan is cheaper than using an air conditioner and will reduce the amount of their energy bills. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, on second thought. The meaning of this phrase is, to change or revise an opinion about something. An example of this phrase is, I was seriously thinking about quitting my job, but on second thought, how will I pay for my apartment and my monthly expenses if I quit? I need to think about this more. Another example of this phrase is, I love eating out of my Red Bull. The food tastes better from it. On second thought, the food from this blue bowl tastes pretty darn good as well. Yummy! This means that although the cat likes eating from the red bowl, he has found, after consideration, that eating from the blue bowl is pretty good as well. He has changed his opinion. The last example of this phrase is, I was only going to buy a few apples, but on second thought, since they're on sale, I'm going to buy more. This means that after noticing that there is a special price on apples, she's going to change her original plan and buy more apples. To summarize, on second thought means to change your opinion or decision on something. Now let's look at some video clips that will provide examples of this phrase. Uh, so what do we do now? Steal a car? Piranha! I was joking! It was a joke! You know, on second thought, Wolf, maybe I'd uh, wish for a ride. Oh yeah? Alakazam. In this clip, the group of bad guy are leaving jail, where they have stayed for one year. Wolf had previously asked Snake what he would want if he had three wishes. Originally, Snake did not have an answer. However, while standing outside the prison, Snake says, on second thought, maybe I'd wish for a ride. Snake is saying that he has now decided that he actually does have a wish that he wants. He wishes that they had a ride so that they could go home. I will take this one. All oh, right, right. So, uh, well, second thoughts, um, maybe it's not that bad after all. Actually, it's a sort of classic, really. In this clip, Anna, a movie star, is buying a book from William's bookstore. William had previously told Anna that one particular book was not a good book. However, Anna decides to buy it. Since William likes Anna a lot, he says, on second thought, maybe it's not that bad. William is changing his opinion of the book to appear as a more agreeable and likable person. Beach, public pool, they both sound awesome. <laughs> On second thought, beach. I'd like to befriend a seagull. <laughs> In this clip, Sheldon dreams that he could go swimming either at the beach or in a swimming pool. However, after thinking a moment, he says, on second thought, beach. Sheldon is saying that after thinking about this a moment, he would prefer going to the beach because he would like to become a friend to a penguin. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, for the record. The meaning of this phrase is, we use this before we say something that is official, important, and should be remembered. An example of this phrase is, you're my lawyer and I want to tell you everything about my case. For the record, I want you to know that I am completely innocent. 
The man is saying that he wants his lawyer to know something very important. He is an innocent man. Another example of this phrase is, I can't believe how great our relationship is. And for the record, I want you to remember who said, I love you, first. It was me. The man is saying that he wants his girlfriend to remember an important fact, that he was the first to say, I love you. The last example of this phrase is, we here, at King Auto, are proud to be the number one auto dealership in the city. And for the record, we have never had a customer regret buying a car from us. The salesman is saying that he wants to say an important fact. All of their customers have been satisfied after buying a car from them. To summarize, for the record is used before you say something important to someone that you want them to remember. Now let's look at some movie clips for examples of this phrase. Well, I should, um, I, I should, I should get some more firewood. Hey, for the record, I like Eugene Fitzherbert much better than Flynn Rider. In this clip, Rapunzel is having a romantic moment with Flynn Rider, whose real name is Eugene. Rapunzel is telling Flynn that she likes the original Eugene more than the updated Flynn because he is more honest and sincere. When she says, for the record, she is saying that her next words are important, that Eugene is more likable than Flynn. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't so hard, right? What? Hey, just for the record, I think you'd make a great dad. Did you just fake this whole thing? Yeah, kinda. In this clip, Bob tricks Calvin into sharing his greatest regret in life. Calvin confesses that he wishes that he had a baby with his wife. After this confession, Bob tells Calvin that, for the record, he thinks Calvin would be a great dad. Bob is saying that the following statement is important and honest. It is that Calvin would be a great father. Verbatim. Really? All huh. right. Well, nice to meet you. <laughs> but that's not who I am at all. Uh, just for the record, I don't think that's who you are. I don't. In this clip, Nick is telling Darcy what people say about her behind her back. When Nick tells her the answer, Darcy is a little sad to hear this. She doesn't believe it's true. Nick knows what she's thinking and has pity for her. He says, for the record, I don't think that's who you are. Nick is saying that his next words are sincere and important. That he doesn't agree with what other people think about her. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, hand it to you. The meaning of this phrase is, to compliment someone on their success or skill. An example of this phrase is, hey boss, I've got to hand it to you. Your hard work is what caused our company to have a great year. The people are complimenting and paying respect to their boss for his hard work and dedication. Another example of this phrase is, I've got to hand it to you guys. Your technology was so much better than everyone else. The man is giving credit to the team for having displayed technology far better than all the other teams. The last example of this phrase is, Hey Sarah, I've got to hand it to you. You have purchased an impressive car. It's amazing. The person is complimenting Sarah on her ability to choose such an amazing car to buy. To summarize, hand it to you means to give credit to and pay respect to. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Would I vouch for him if he wasn't?
Gotta hand it to you, totem pole. You're either hard as nails. In this clip, Griff is wondering if Baby is tough or just scared. Doc says that he chose Baby for his driving skills and that the other gang members should accept him. Griff accepts that Baby is a good driver but doesn't like the fact that Baby doesn't participate in the robberies. Since Baby is always quiet, Griff says, I have to hand it to you, you're either hard as nails, Griff is complimenting Baby on possibly being very tough mentally. But Griff is also suspicious that Baby is just a scared little boy. And by the time they realize what happened, so long, we'll be driving off into the sunset legacy cemented. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hand it to you, buddy. You're a real artist. In this clip, Wolf is explaining his carefully thought-out robbery plan to the other gang members. When he finishes his explanation, Snake says, Got to hand it to you, buddy. You're a real artist. Snake is giving Wolf a sincere compliment on planning out this careful and wonderful plan to steal the Golden Dolphin. Snake is saying that Wolf's idea is so perfect, it's almost like he is an artist for making such a plan. Dan? Yeah. I gotta talk to you. Okay, you'll be there. Bye. Yeah, I gotta talk to you, too. It was Nike. You're gonna announce to the trades that we won the account. Yeah, well, I gotta hand it to you. I mean, you, you, you saved my ass. You saved the company's ass. Well, actually, Dan, you know, I had very little to do with saving anybody's ass. In this clip, Dan is talking with Nick about how they were successful at signing Nike as a client. Dan thinks that Nick is responsible for this and says, I got to hand it to you for their success. Dan is giving Nick a big compliment because he thinks that Nick is the reason they were successful. Nick doesn't feel good about this because he knows that another employee, Darcy, should get most of the credit. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, not cut out for. The meaning of this phrase is, to not be the right type of person for something. An example of this phrase is, I struck out again. Maybe I'm not cut out for baseball. Another example of this phrase is, I know that you want me to be a movie star, but I just don't think that I'm cut out for it. The dog is saying that it doesn't think that being a movie star is a good occupation for him. The last example of this phrase is, I've been practicing golf for a long time, but I don't think I'm cut out for it. The man is saying that he doesn't feel that he has the ability to be a golfer. To summarize, not cut out for is to not have the qualities and abilities needed for something. Now let's look at some movie clips that have examples of this phrase. You're a leafman. You know how important today is. You know what? I'm thinking maybe I'm just not cut out for this. That's the problem. You are cut out for it. And I'm tired of waiting for you to prove it. In this clip, Nod is telling Ronan that he doesn't feel he's cut out for being a leaf man. Nod is saying that he thinks he lacks the skills to be a leaf man. Ronan disagrees and says that Nod is cut out for it. Ronan is saying that he believes that Nod does have the ability to be a leaf man and he wants Nod to start trying. I'm never gonna get a chance to play in front of anybody. Marty, one rejection isn't the end of the world. Nah, I just don't think I'm cut out for music. But you're good, Marty. You're really good. And this audition tape of yours is great. You've got to send it into the record company. In this clip, Marty is talking to his girlfriend, Jennifer. After getting rejected by the school for his music abilities, Marty tells Jennifer that maybe he's not cut out for music. Marty is saying that maybe he simply doesn't have the necessary skills to be a musician. Jennifer doesn't agree and says that he should not give up. We're built for other things. Sorry, Squirt. Some monsters just aren't cut out for the big leagues. 
In this clip, a group of scare students are telling Mike that they don't feel they have the skills to scare people. Mike doesn't agree and does not want them to give up. When Mike's friends leave, another student says, some monsters just aren't cut out for the big leagues. This student is saying that some monsters simply don't have the necessary skills to be good at scaring people. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, take off. Although this phrase has many meanings, for this video, the meaning is, to leave, or go away. An example of this phrase is, it's really late Terence. I'm exhausted. I'm going to take off now. The man is saying that he is leaving the office and will go have a beer. Just kidding. We really only know that he is leaving. Another example of this phrase is, wait a minute. Do I know you? Nope. I think that I'm going to take off now. The dog is saying that, since it doesn't know us, he's going to go away. The last example of this phrase is, we'll be staying only one night and we'll be taking off early tomorrow morning. The people are saying that they'll be leaving the hotel early the next morning. To summarize, take off means to leave, to depart, to go away. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips for examples of this phrase. Where are you going? I'm going to take off. Taking it off. It's like, what, 10 o'clock? I'm tired. Irish curse. You don't know. In this clip, Will tells Chucky that he's tired. He says that he's going to take off. Will is saying that he's going to go home and go to sleep. Check him out. Uh, life concussion. Uh-oh, I carry him to a hospital. No! Oh, I don't think you should. Just take off, man. Find your horse you came in on. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. I'm so sorry about this. In this clip, two thieves try to rob Julius, but they are unsuccessful. During the attempted robbery, one thief falls off his motorcycle and is hurt. When Julius examines him, he says that they should take him to the hospital. However, the thieves are afraid of this. They just want Julius to go away so they tell him to take off. Take off means to leave or go away. Thank you, sir. Then you saw those two boys run out of the sack of suds, jump in this car and take off. Yeah, they peeled away. In this clip, Jim, the prosecutor, is talking with Ernie, a witness, to a robbery. Ernie says that he saw the two young men accused of the robbery jump into a car and take off after the robbery. Ernie is saying that he saw the two young men jump into a car and drive away quickly after robbing the store. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is figure out. The meaning of this phrase is, to be able to understand something or to solve a problem. An example of this phrase is, Natalie learned how to ride her bicycle quickly but she hasn't been able to figure out how to take off her helmet. Another way to say this is, Natalie learned how to ride her bike but she hasn't been able to solve the problem of removing her helmet. And just to summarize, figure out is used when we think about something until we understand it. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. But no matter what I do, it's wrong. That's not home, Jewel. Maybe for you, but not for me. You know what? You need to figure out what you want. In this clip, Blue, the male bird, is having problems trying to live in the Amazon. He is thinking about leaving. Jewel gets a little annoyed with Blue because he's only thinking about himself and not considering how she feels. 
she tells him to figure out what is really right for him and her. And maybe stop thinking about just yourself and start thinking about us. No eggs in... <gasps> Hmm? Oh, these are clever pigs. Okay, look, I'm gonna run up and tackle the pig on the left. Bomb, you can handle too. Chuck, hmm. I don't know if you can help. We gotta figure out a way to get into that... In this clip, the pigs have stolen all of the eggs from the birds and they want to eat them. Red, the angry bird, is trying to figure out how to get into the room to save the eggs. Is this some kind of a joke to you? Our parents' war is about to become ours. Figure out which side you're on. In this clip, Astrid has become annoyed with Hiccup. Hiccup doesn't want to fight with dragons because he has become friends with one of them. Astrid tells him that their parents have been fighting the dragons for years and that Hiccup needs to figure out if he is going to help them or not. What? I figured it out. In this clip, Maui has figured out who Moana is. He has changed his opinion about Moana and is about to compliment her. He tells her that she has successfully crossed the ocean and that she should be the one seeking out new islands to introduce people to. You know, the ocean used to love when I pulled up islands. Because your ancestors would sail or seas. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, my bad. The meaning of this phrase is, I'm sorry. It's my fault. It's my mistake. An example of this phrase is, are you saying this glove is not a toy for me? Oops. My bad. To say it another way, I made a mistake. I thought this glove was my toy. And to summarize, my bad is used to admit that we made a mistake. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. We have to get these people off the bridge! Got it! No! Ah! Move the dividers! Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> my bad. In this clip, the human asks the alien to help get the people off the bridge. The alien starts to pick up the cars to throw them off the bridge. The human explains to the alien to remove the cement dividers. The alien realizes that throwing cars off the bridge is not smart and says, my bad. <laughs> what would you say about my performance? And don't forget, the squirrel was... <laughs> The Red Angry Bird had been performing a show and was hoping to get a good review from the customer. However, after tripping over the squirrel and realizing that he was falling towards their egg, he knew that the people would be angry with him. As a result, he says, sorry, my bad. <clears throat> and so, after careful consideration and... Sorry, my bad. At the meeting, the speaker is about to announce a serious decision that he's made when someone's phone starts to ring. Everyone knows that this is very impolite. The embarrassed man apologizes and says, my bad. I've decided. Ian had told one of the chipmunks that she should wear high shoes. So the angry chipmunk in the helicopter says that she doesn't need to wear them, and she throws them to the ground. However, she accidentally hits a motorcycle that is redirected towards Ian. Although the chipmunk was angry, she never intended to do this, and she says, my bad. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, nothing to do with. The meaning of this phrase is, to not involve someone or something. An example of this phrase is, 
Greg, you told me that you had nothing to do with drugs. Yet we found all of these drugs in your car. To say it another way, you told me that you were not involved in drugs, but we found drugs in your car. And to summarize, nothing to do with is used to say we have no connection with something. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Now you do realize that was a deep pelter turbo. Officer, please! It was that verminator! He sold it to me! This has nothing to do with me! Hey, hey, it was in your yard, your name's on the contract, so you can tell it to the judge. In this clip, Gladys and the exterminator have been trying to kill the animals that live around a group of homes. Gladys is caught using an illegal machine. Gladys lies to the police and says that she has nothing to do with the illegal machine. It's not my fault! You know, that woman was a trap for you. She caught you and you couldn't get away, so you... You chewed off your own foot. That was the price you had to pay for your freedom. You know, Johnny had nothing to do with it. In this clip, Loretta is trying to explain to Ronnie how his accident was a result of him needing to escape from his ex-girlfriend. She is telling him that his brother, Johnny, had nothing to do with the accident. He doesn't believe her. You did what you had to do between you and you. So you expect me to put all that on hold while you try to undo this thing that happened to you? That I had absolutely nothing to do with? In this clip, Derek asks his girlfriend, Susan, if she expects him to wait for her to solve her problems. She says yes, she expects him to wait for her. He says that he had nothing to do with the problems in her life and he doesn't want to wait. He is ending the relationship. Yes, that's exactly what I expect. So we've now finished three phrases. What do you think? Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is quid pro quo. Although this technically is not an idiom or phrasal verb, it's an expression that comes from Latin and is often used in English conversations. The meaning of this phrase is, something is given to a person in return for something they have done. In other words, I give you something and you give me something. An example of this phrase is, okay Darla, quid pro quo. I will help you stretch your back, and then you help me stretch mine. To say it another way, I will help you and then you help me. To summarize, quid pro quo means, I will make a deal with you. I will do this for you if you do that for me. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. If I help you, Clarice, it will be turns with us too. Quid pro quo, I tell you things, you tell me things. Not about this case, though, about yourself. Quid pro quo, yes or no. In this classic movie clip, Hannibal Lecter is talking with Detective Clarice Sterling about exchanging information with her. He says that it must be a quid pro quo exchange, which means he will provide her information about the police case, but in exchange, she must provide him personal information about herself. In this movie clip, the genie is telling Aladdin that he will give him three wishes. However, he says that there are a few provisos and a couple of quid pro quos. Later in the movie, he explains the provisos but only hints at the quid pro quos, one of which is that the genie is eventually freed from being locked in the lamp. Like... Uh, rule number one? I can't kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you got cold in your ears, mate! You don't pay the mortgage, you don't own the land! That's basic real estate law, my friend! We broke walls! In this clip, the larger rodents are telling Rango that because he didn't continue paying his mortgage, he no longer owns the land. 
they explained that this is basic real estate law where there is an exchange of money for land. This exchange is summarized as quid pro quo. You're facing this town again. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The names of these phrases are, no idea, no clue, and not have the faintest. The meaning of these phrases is, to not know anything about something. An example of these phrases is, all these people are saying different things. I have no idea what they want me to do. I really have no clue. To say it another way, I don't understand anything that these people are saying. To summarize, no idea, no clue, and not have the faintest mean to be completely unable to guess, understand, or deal with something. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. In this clip, Sully is shocked when there is a sudden increase in electrical power that seems to be somehow related to the child. He asks Mike what happened. Mike says that he has no idea, meaning he does not know anything about this event. Later, they learn the power comes from the laughter of humans. But it would be really great if it didn't do it again. I work at the American Library of Cultural History. The what? Exactly. It's kind of a television library. Do you watch a lot of TV? No, no, it's television history. What's on now, I, I have no clue. In this clip, Albert says that he works at the American Library of Cultural History. He explains that it's about television history. Eva asks if he watches a lot of TV. Albert says he has no clue what is on TV currently, meaning he doesn't know anything about what kind of shows are on TV at the moment. Yeah. When I tried to watch one of those housewives of... These are signatures? Yes. Who's Arthur Gwen Geiger? I haven't the faintest idea. In this clip, Philip Marlowe is asking General Sternwood about money that was paid to Arthur Gwen Geiger. When Philip asks the general who Geiger is, the general says, he hasn't the faintest idea, meaning that he doesn't know anything about this person. Did you ask her? No, and I don't intend to. If I did, she'd just suck her thumb and look coy. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, down to earth. The meaning of this phrase is, someone who is practical, reasonable, and friendly. An example of this phrase is, Janice is such a wonderful person. She's so down to earth. It seems like everyone likes her. Another way to say this is, Janice is great. She doesn't try to impress people. She just lives her life peacefully and accepts everyone as they are. To summarize, down to earth is when someone is open and honest as well as practical and realistic. Great. Now let's look at some movie clips for examples of this phrase. Oh, you can have it. We'll keep the deposit. Bye. Lovely couple. So down to earth. In this clip, B and Thomas, with help from their animal friends, have tricked a husband and wife into not buying a house. As the couple exits the house, B says that they are a lovely couple. And Thomas says that they are, so down to earth, meaning that they are wise and sensible. However, they are actually being sarcastic. They don't really feel these people are very sensible. Have you ever had a caviar garnish? Oh, I had no idea Frank Nabasky was going to be so down to earth. In this clip, Patricia is talking with her boyfriend Joe as they prepare to go to sleep. Patricia has started to fall in love with another man named Frank and she's telling Joe how much she admires Frank by saying he's so down to earth. Joe is not really happy or interested in hearing this. Then there's an asterisk. Oh, 
I remember Astrid. She's like who I want to be when I grow up. Astrid is awesome. And she's probably the only one I'm actually close with. And she's really grounded and down to earth. In this clip, Nick and his girlfriend, Rachel, are talking while sitting on an airplane. They are talking about another friend named Astrid. They both admire Astrid very much and refer to her as down to earth, meaning that Astrid is sensible and friendly. Once you get to know her. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is keep it up. The meaning of this phrase is to encourage someone to keep doing something. An example of this phrase is, you're dancing great Larissa. Keep it up. We're capturing this on video. To say it another way, don't stop dancing Larissa. You're doing great. To summarize, keep it up means to continue working hard or trying as hard as you have been in the past. Fantastic. Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. Oh, he's a hefty bear, and he's just crying, neither should you, or we'll be in trouble, because they're going to find us. So please stop crying right now. Good, right now. good, Sully. Ooh, Keep it up, you're uh... doing great. In this clip, the monsters, Mike and Sully, have awoken a young girl, and she is crying. The monsters fear that since the girl is crying, other people might come to her aid and find them in the house. Sully offers the girl a doll, and she calms down. Upon seeing this, Mike tells Sully, Keep it up. Meaning he should continue to keep the girl calm. Great. Uh, my manager and I are now prepared to take your questions. Oscar, Oscar are, you are you going to continue working here at the wash? <laughs> Please, I barely work here now. <laughs> ah, keep it up, kid. You're slaying him. In this clip, Oscar and Sykes have teamed up to market Oscar as a shark slayer. The news reporter is anxious to interview Oscar and build a story about him. Oscar answers her questions in a funny way, and everyone laughs. Since Sykes can see that everyone really likes the way Oscar is answering the questions, he says, keep it up kid. He wants Oscar to continue being funny so that he can find a way to make money from Oscar's name. No, he's slaying sharks! Hey, congratulations, look at you, Captain Murtaugh. I, I don't really know how to say this, but... You really inspire me. Keep it up. In this clip, two policemen meet in a police station. One man, Butters, approaches another, Murtaugh, and congratulates him for doing a good job. He then tells Murtaugh how much he admires him and says, keep it up. He's asking Murtaugh to continue doing a good job. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrasal verb is, got a thing for. The meaning of this phrase is, to have a keen or particular interest in something or someone. An example of this phrasal verb is, Jack has a thing for Anna. He's always looking for an opportunity to talk with her. This means that Jack has always had romantic feelings for Anna. Another example of this phrase is, I don't really understand Becky. She really has a thing for dogs. This means that Becky has a special love for dogs. And to summarize, got a thing for means to have a special interest or love for something or someone. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips with examples of this phrasal verb. It's too shallow for most sharks, but Troy comes around. Wee! Fun for me. Him and his buddies. Why? Oh, Cause he's got a thing for Cordelia, dude. Don't you listen? His buddies come mostly to stuff my head into a lobster hole. In this clip, Dylan is talking with Pi about a shark named Troy. Pi asks Dylan why a shark would want to come into a shallow reef. Dylan explains that Troy has got a thing for Cordelia. Dylan is saying that Troy has a romantic interest in a beautiful female fish named Cordelia. Got a thing for means to have a special interest in something. In this case, it's a romantic interest. 
Read their lips, Mopsy. If I was a learned fellow, I'd say she anthropomorphizes them in lieu of any genuine human interaction. But he's not a learned fellow. Which is why I think she's just got a thing for those rabbits. Which is why I think she's just got a thing for most man butts. Huh? In this clip, Jeremy is talking to two shop clerks about why Bee is so interested in the wild rabbits. One of the clerks eventually says that he thinks Bee simply has got a thing for those rabbits. The clerk is saying that Bee simply has a special interest and affection for rabbits. Rapunzel? Did I ever tell you I've got a thing for brunettes? <laughs> In this clip, Rapunzel is standing over Eugene with great concern that he might die. When Eugene awakens and looks at Rapunzel, he tells her that he has a thing for brunettes. Eugene is telling Rapunzel that he is particularly attracted to girls with brown hair. However, Eugene is actually telling Rapunzel that he loves her regardless of the color of her hair. Great! Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrasal verb is, get along. The meaning of this phrase is, to have a friendly relationship with someone. An example of this phrasal verb is, Sophie is just one of those people that gets along with everyone. She's so sweet. This means that Sophie is friendly with everyone and everyone seems to like Sophie. Another example of this phrase is, all the friends that I made when I was in university are still my friends today. We all get along so well together. This means that their group of friends from university have maintained a wonderful friendship for many years. And to summarize, get along means to have a good relationship with, to be friendly with. Great. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. Let's go, Kyle. Very nice, Shrek. What? I told you coming here was a bad idea. You could have at least tried to get along with my father. You know, somehow, I don't think I was going to get Daddy's blessing. In this clip, Shrek is talking with Fiona. Shrek and Fiona's father had just had an argument. Fiona thought that Shrek had not tried to get along with her father. Fiona is saying that Shrek did not make an effort to be friendly with her father. But the truth is that her father did not make an effort to get along with Shrek. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, that was meant for you. <laughs> Come on, can we all just get along? This is in your fight, big nose. <laughs> you mess with my friends, you mess with me. <laughs> in this clip, Morrow and his friends are challenging Blue and Jewel to a fight. Raphael steps in and says, can we all just get along? Raphael is asking everyone to be friendly with each other and have a good relationship. But Mora does not want to get along with the other animals, and a big fight begins. Naive little hick with good grades and big ideas decides, hey, look at me, I'm gonna move to Zootopia, where predators and prey live in harmony and sing Kumbaya, only to find, whoopsie, we don't all get along. And that dream of becoming a big city cop? Double whoopsie. In this clip, Nick is talking with a police officer, Judy. Nick thinks that Judy does not understand how the world really operates. Nick thinks that Judy has a vision of all animals getting along with each other. Nick is saying that Judy is wrong to think that all animals will ever be friendly with one another. Nick thinks that Judy is too young and inexperienced to understand how the world really is. Fantastic! Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrasal verb is, ask out. The meaning of this phrase is, to invite someone to go out with romantic intentions. An example of this phrasal verb is, Rob just met that girl in the coffee shop. I think that he's going to ask her out. 
Another example is, an interesting fact about Mary and Roger is that Mary is the one that, asked out, Roger while they were camping. This means that Mary invited Roger on a date while they were camping. Yes, a girl can ask out a boy. And to summarize, ask out means to invite someone to go on a date with romantic intentions. Great, let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. Oh, there she is. Peter, you, you, you always talk about this girl. If you're so obsessed with her, why don't you just ask her out? No, oh, I can't do that. I'm just another customer. You can't just walk up to a waitress and ask her out. In this clip, Peter is talking to his friends about a waitress that he is attracted to. One friend, Samir, asks Peter why he doesn't just ask her out. Samir is asking Peter why he doesn't simply invite the woman out on a date. Ask out means to invite someone to go on a date with romantic intentions. A man might say this to a woman, I like you. I would like to ask you out. Are you interested? And of course, a woman can ask out a man as well. Man mask? <laughs> Dog hair. I knew it. You stay here. Honestly, woman, I am still the park hero around here. Which reminds me, why haven't you asked me out on a date? Oh. In this clip, Bryson is talking with a female squirrel, Andy. Bryson is overconfident and asks why Andy hasn't asked him out. Bryson is asking Andy why she hasn't invited him to go on a date with her. However, Andy has already left the area and hasn't heard what Bryson is saying. But listen, you can share my rashes, woo, if you want. Are you asking me out to dinner? <laughs> oh, no. I... Well, if you don't have anything else planned. In this clip, Weaver is talking with a beautiful worker ant while they are underground. Weaver says that he's willing to share some of his food with her. The female ant asks him, are you asking me out to dinner? The female ant wants to know if Weaver is asking her to go on a date with him. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrasal verb is, break up or broke up. The meaning of this phrase is, to end or cause something to end. This could be a personal relationship, business relationship, or other situation. An example of this phrasal verb is, Bill and Terry have been fighting a lot. I think she will break up with him. This means that since Terry is so unhappy, she will probably end her relationship with Bill. Another example of this phrase is, Kurt and Sandra broke up last year after having a silly argument, but now they are back together. This means that Kurt and Sandra ended their relationship last year, but now they are back together again. The last example of this phrase is, the Tate and Adams law firm couldn't agree on a business plan, so they decided to break up the company. This means that the managers of the company couldn't agree on a business plan, so they decided to divide the company into two separate companies. Each partner would take control of one company. And to summarize, breakup means to end a personal, business, or other relationship. Good work. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. Don't you think that daisies are the friendliest flower? I do. When did you break up? A couple of weeks ago. Everyone is breaking up. You, me, this other person I know broke up with someone in an elevator. In this clip, Joe is talking with Kathleen about their relationships. Kathleen asks Joe, when did you break up? Kathleen is asking Joe when he and his girlfriend ended their relationship. Break up means to end a relationship of some sort. Although these clips reference romantic relationships, 
break up can refer to many other kinds of relationships as well. You know, I just, that uh, loan thing is not my uh, specialty. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, oh, my God. Uh... Well, I broke up with Avery. <laughs> In this clip, Jerry Maguire is talking with his employee, Dorothy. Jerry is having a difficult time in his life. These problems have created issues between him and his girlfriend, Avery. They broke up. Jerry tells Dorothy about the breakup, and she is shocked. Jerry is telling Dorothy that he and Avery have ended their relationship and will no longer continue dating. Use it wisely, and romance will follow. Ooh, good one. Yeah, I hope so. Who knows? Ladies! Vince! I thought you broke up with him. I did, I did, I did, I did. In this clip, Linda is talking to her sister, Marnie. When Vince shows up in a car, Marnie says to Linda, I thought you broke up with him. Marnie is telling Linda that she thought Linda had ended her relationship with Vince. Marnie doesn't like Vince because he is a criminal. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, going out with. The meaning of this phrase is, to have a relationship with. To go on a date. To spend time with. An example of this phrase is, Ted has been going out with Anna for about two years now. They're obviously in love. This means that Ted has been Anna's boyfriend for two years. It does not mean that they only go on dates occasionally. Another example of this phrase is, Sam is going out with Linda this evening. He really likes her and I know that he is nervous. This means that Sam is going on a date with Linda. If he is feeling nervous, it's probably only a date. She is probably not his girlfriend, at least not yet. There's also a non-romantic meaning which means, to spend time with someone. An example would be, Peter is going out with David tonight. They're going to watch a basketball game. This simply means that Peter and David are spending some time together this evening, watching a basketball game. And to summarize, going out with means, to be dating, to go on a date, to spend time with someone socially. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrasal verb. No. Yes, Wisconsin babes! Here comes the Colin! No. <laughs> there are a few babes in America, I got you. But they're already going out with rich, attractive guys. That tone, you're just jealous. In this clip, Colin is telling his good friend, Tony, that he is traveling to America to meet beautiful girls. Tony tells Colin that yes, there are some beautiful girls in America, but they're already going out with other rich, attractive American men. Tony is telling Colin that although there are beautiful girls in America, they're probably already dating other rich, attractive American men. Sometimes this term can mean going on a date. Sometimes this term can mean boyfriend or girlfriend. If a woman says she has been going out with a man for a year, it means that he has been her boyfriend for one year. If a woman says that she will be going out with a man on Saturday night, she means that they are going on a date on Saturday, but he may not be her boyfriend, at least not yet. Name's Curry. She's pretty. American. Interesting. Really? Used to work at Vogue, lives in America now. Only goes out with very glamorous people. In this clip, Charles is talking with Phoebe about a woman that he is attracted to. Phoebe tells Charles that the woman, Carrie, only goes out with very glamorous people. Phoebe is telling Charles that Carrie only goes on dates with very glamorous people. 
In this clip, we don't know if the men Carrie dated became boyfriends or were just people she went on dates with. He's been married for over a year. Really? Married? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Look, I got one. There is no point in my going out with someone I might really like if I met him at the right time, but who right now has no chance of being anything to me but a transition. In this clip, Sally is talking with her friends during lunch. One friend wants to introduce her to a man that she knows. Sally is not interested because she thinks that anybody she goes out with now will only be a transitional man. Sally is saying that if she starts dating someone now, the relationship will not succeed because she is not ready emotionally to be dating someone. In this clip, the person, Sally, is only talking about dating. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrasal verb is, hitting on. The meaning of this phrase is, to show someone that you are attracted to them, and interested in them romantically. An example of this phrasal verb is, every time Alice goes to a bar, someone is always hitting on her. This means that every time Alice goes to a bar, men approach her and let her know that they are interested in her. Another example of this phrase is, some boys are very shy, but not Casey. I think that he's hit on every girl in our school. This means that Casey has shown romantic interests in many girls that go to school with him. And to summarize, hit on means to show someone that you are sexually attracted to them. Fantastic! Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. Thank you again. It's nothing, ladies. He's the fastest Jack in Jefferson County. What was that all about? I really don't know. They've been hitting on me all night. In this clip, Phil is dancing with Rita when two older ladies say thank you to Phil for helping them earlier. Rita asks Phil why the two ladies were thanking him. Phil jokingly says that he doesn't know why and that they'd been hitting on him all night. Phil is saying, just as a joke, that the two women have been expressing their romantic interest in him all evening. There are many ways a person can hit on another person. A man might walk up to a woman and say, Hey beautiful, how are you doing? If the man has never met the woman before, he is probably hitting on her. And I thought you were just a regular Joe. I am Joe. Not the one that I met this morning. Hitting on me in as nice a way as I've been hit on in a long time. The second that you found out I was my father's daughter, you, uh... In this clip, Joe Black is talking with Susan just after she has finished swimming. Susan is confused by Joe's behavior earlier that day. Susan talks about the wonderful way Joe had hit on her when she was having breakfast. Susan is saying that Joe had expressed his romantic interest in her so nicely when they were having breakfast. But let's face it, almost every woman would be happy if Brad Pitt hit on them. Try to be a student, Dr. Pilcher. You ever go out for cheeseburgers and beer? The amusing house wine? Are you hitting on me, doctor? Yes. In this clip, Dr. Pilcher asks Agent Starling if she enjoys going out for cheeseburgers and drinking wine. Agent Starling is curious if the question is also an invitation to go on a date. Therefore, Agent Starling asks Dr. Pilcher if he is hitting on her. She already knows the answer. Agent Starling is asking Dr. Pilcher if he is interested in her romantically. He says, yes. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this idiom is, no hard feelings. The meaning of this idiom is, this is used to say that you are not upset with someone. 
An example of this idiom is, Patrice and Alexa had a taekwondo fight yesterday, but there are obviously no hard feelings. This means that although Patrice and Alexa were fighting against each other in a competition, neither of them feel any anger or resentment afterwards. They both understand it was simply a competition. Another example of this phrase is, okay, you want to wrestle. Let's wrestle. All right, that's enough. I'm tired. Hey, no hard feelings, okay? The dog is saying that even though they were wrestling a little, there is no more anger or bitterness after finishing. And to summarize, no hard feelings means that you don't feel angry or bitter about something. Fantastic! Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this idiom. Whoa, whoa, Tony. Mm -hmm. There's only 4,000 here. I mean, usually for a car like this, it's 6,000, Tony. We're in a recession, Vince. Everything's tough. Everything. So, now look, you want to try someone else? No hard feelings. No, no, no. I, I just could have used some more, you know? I mean, it's... In this clip, Tony is talking to Vincent about a stolen car that he is buying. When Vincent expresses his disappointment with the amount of money he is paid, Tony says that there is a recession and that if he wants to sell it somewhere else, there's no hard feelings. Tony is saying that he will not feel angry, hurt, or insulted if Vincent tries to sell the car to someone else. No hard feelings means that a person does not feel angry or upset about something that happened previously. Dean Hart Scrabble. If we get back into the scary program, I hope there's no hard feelings. Tomorrow, each of you must prove that you are undeniably scary. In this clip, Sully is talking with Dean Harnscrabble about getting back into the scare program. Sully's team is doing well, and he is hoping that there are no hard feelings between his team and the Dean. Sully is telling the dean that he wants to get along with her and he hopes that she doesn't feel any anger or resentment with Sully and his team about things that happened earlier. Thanks for securing the satellite codes. You really saved my ass. Your country thanks you. Just doing my job. I'm really sorry about your hand. I hope you know that wasn't personal. Oh, no hard feelings at all, Pam. <laughs> Besides, everybody makes mistakes. Calvin here thought you were the Black Badger. In this clip, Bob is talking with Agent Pamela Harris about a successful mission that they completed. Pam apologizes to Bob for getting his hand hurt during the operation. Bob says that there are no hard feelings to Pam. Bob is saying that he is not angry or upset about getting his hand hurt during the operation. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, hear me out. The meaning of this phrase is, to listen to everything that someone has to say. An example of this phrase is, come on Janet. I know that you're angry, but hear me out. I can explain everything that happened. Another way to say this is, Janet, if you listen to everything that I have to say, I'm sure that you'll be more understanding about what actually happened. And just to summarize, hear me out, is used when we want someone to listen to us until we are finished speaking. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. I have the magic beans in my grasp, and you sent this very attractive Neville woman to interfere. You are a curse on my life! Whoa, 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 wait. Hear me out, okay? In this clip, Puss is telling Humpty that he feels angry and that he has been betrayed. Humpty is apologetic and wants to explain the things that he has done. Humpty asks Puss to hear me out, which means he's asking Puss to listen to his explanation. Yes, yes, I sent Kitty to bring you here. But I was just mad, that's all. I needed some time to think. But you shouldn't have left me out there. <laughs> I'm being attacked! No, I'm not attacking you. I'm, I'm trying to be honest. Just hear me out! In this clip, Mike is trying to explain some of the things that he's done recently. 
Mike doesn't realize that Sully is fighting with Randall, who is invisible. When Sully tells Mike that he's being attacked, Mike thinks that Sully is now angry with him. Mike quickly asks Sully to hear me out, which means he's asking Sully to listen to everything he has to say. Look, you and I are a team. Nothing is more important than our friendship. But this, Tito, this is in a category all by itself. Angelo, please. Come on, Chet, just hear me out. In this clip, Tito and Turbo decide that they want Turbo to enter the Indianapolis 500 car race. Angelo and Chet think the idea is crazy because a snail has never raced in a car race. Turbo thinks that Chet has not heard all the reasons for entering the race and tells Chet, hear me out. By saying this, Turbo is asking Chet to calm down and listen to all the reasons that this is a good idea. Theo, a snail cannot race in a competition meant for cars. There are rules. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, on a roll. The meaning of this phrase is, to be experiencing a period of success or good luck. An example of this phrase is, I've really been on a roll today. It seems like I can't lose. I may as well make a big bet. To say it another way, I've been having good luck all day today. I'm going to make another big bet. And to summarize, on a roll is used when a person is having great success and they feel it is likely to continue. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Bot fighting is illegal. You're gonna get yourself arrested. Bot fighting is not illegal. Betting on bot fighting, that's, that's illegal, but so lucrative. I'm on a roll, big brother. In this clip, Hero had recently been gambling on bot fighting with some bad people. He won a lot of money. The bad people started chasing Hero, but his brother rescued him. His brother tells him that he needs to stop this gambling. Hero says that he is on a roll, which means he's had a series of successful events occurring in his life. And there is no stopping me! Those numbers are pretty sweet. Are they? You know, I haven't even noticed. <laughs> and uh, how is Georgie doing? He's doing great. I love working with that big guy. Keep the doors coming, Charlie. I'm on a roll today. In this clip, Mike asked Georgie's partner how Georgie is doing. The partner says Georgie is doing great. Georgie then exits from one of the scare doors and apparently has had a successful trip. He tells his assistants that he wants to go on more assignments because he's on a roll, which means he's having a period of success today. George and I are like brothers. <laughs> 2319! Sure enough. Smart thinking there, fella. Start climbing. Mike, get your foot out of my face. Not bad, huh, Vince? You keep thinking like that, your head's gonna catch on fire. Well, you know, you get on a roll, you... In this clip, Rango and the other animals are in an underground tunnel. They are looking for the animals that stole their water. As they travel underground, Rango discovers how the thieves escaped. He looks at a girl and smiles as he says he is, on a roll, meaning he's been having a period of success. <laughs> anything like you today you are on a roll my in this clip sully has just returned from a scare trip mike tells sully that he's done a great job today and that sully is on a roll which means that he has been having a period of time with great success my man another day like this and that scare record in the bag that's right baby uh -huh. fantastic let's move on to the next phrase the name of this phrase is, screwed up, or, messed up. The meaning of this phrase is, when someone makes a mistake or does something badly. An example of this phrase is, I heard that the fire down there was related to an outdoor barbecue. Wow. Somebody really screwed up. To say it another way, 
Somebody must have really made a big mistake managing the barbecue down there to result in such a large fire. And to summarize, screwed up and messed up are used when you make a mistake, damage something, or spoil something. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. We had a deal! I know we did, but that, that was before I... Ah, uh, it's all so messed up. So everything in the ring... A trick? A lie? I screwed up. I, 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 I should have told you before now. I in this clip, Hiccup is admitting that he broke the agreement that he had with his father because he became friends with one of the dragons. His father asks him if everything he had been doing was a trick or a lie. Hiccup says that he screwed up, meaning he made a big mistake, and that he should have explained everything to his father earlier. I just, you take this out on me, be mad at me, but please. I don't care about that. I don't care that your ex-girlfriend told me all this crap. Is that you didn't tell me any of it. I screwed up. Why? I really messed up. Why? Okay? In this clip, Rachel has learned about some secrets that Nick had been keeping from her. She doesn't understand why he would not tell her. She thinks that maybe he had been testing her. Nick says that he simply screwed up. He messed up. This means he made a big mistake. Why? Okay. Were you trying to test me? Why would you do that? I made a mistake. Should I not be here? Probably not. Oh, I screwed up big time. In this clip, Eva feels really ashamed. She had been keeping a secret from her new boyfriend. When he finds out about this, he feels betrayed and angry. Eva returns home and is met by a friend's daughter. Eva says to her, I really screwed up. This means that she is saying she made a big mistake. What happened? Oh, shit. That's my mom. Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, in the bag. The meaning of this phrase is, when you are certain to win, achieve, or obtain something. An example of this phrase is, the proposal is great guys. I really think that winning this contract is, in the bag. To say it another way, we have done such a good job creating this proposal, I think that we will certainly win the contract. To summarize, in the bag means that someone is very confident that they will be successful. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. This is it, Daryl. One lap to go and Lightning McQueen has a huge lead. Oh, he's got it in the bag. Call in the dogs, put out the fire. In this clip, the announcers are talking about the end of a car race where Lightning McQueen has a huge lead. One of the announcers says that Lightning has the race in the bag. This means that he thinks Lightning will definitely win the race. Right, we're gonna crown us a new champion. Oh, yeah. I've never seen anything like you today. You are on a <laughs> roll, my man. Another day like this and that scare record's in the bag. In this clip, we are once again seeing Mike congratulate Sully on a great day of scaring. Sully is talking about breaking the scare record. He says that if he can have another day like this, that scare record is in the bag. He means that he will surely break the scare record. Uh-huh. There's only a small float out there, so you should grab it. Good for a five pound. Got 250,000 shares at 18 and a quarter from Jansen. Think I can pull twice that at 18 and a half from the California pensions. We got close to a half a million shares in the bag. Huh? In this clip, one of the stock traders is talking about selling a lot of shares of stock. He says that they have close to a half a million shares in the bag. 
he means that he feels that they will certainly sell a half a million shares of stock. The Terminator! That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, going under. The meaning of this phrase is, when a business or project becomes unable to continue. An example of this phrase is, I've been operating my business for six years, but at this point, there's no way I can keep it from going under. To say it another way, after successfully running my business for six years, I can now see that I must close the company. To summarize, going under means to be unable to continue in operation or existence. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. James, this company has been in my family for three generations. I would do anything to keep it from going under. So in this clip, Mr. Waternoos, who is the owner of Monsters Incorporated, is talking about how his family has owned the company for three generations. He tells Sully that he is worried about the company and would do anything to prevent the company from going under. When he says this, he is saying that he would do anything to prevent the business from having to close down. So would I, sir. Mm. Listen, I, uh, I have a, a sad announcement to make. Uh, City Books on 23rd Street, it's going under. In this clip, Joe Fox is talking with his father and grandfather. Together they own a large chain of bookstores called Fox Books. Joe says that he has sad news that a competing independent bookstore is going under, closing. In truth, they are all very happy that this other bookstore will close because now they will have more customers. Oh, another independent bites the dust. We're not anxious for this to get around, but we have been diverting a little water to irrigate orange groves in the Northwest Valley. As you know, the farmers out there have no legal right to our water, but we've been trying to help some of them out, keep them from going under. In this clip, Yelburton is talking with Giddies about how the water supply has been redirected. He says that they've done this to help farmers in the Northwest Valley irrigate their crops because of the drought. He says that he's concerned that the farmers might go under if he doesn't help them. This means that without his help, the farmers might have to sell their farms and close their businesses. Naturally, when you divert water, there's a little runoff. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, save your breath. The meaning of this phrase is, it is useless to continue talking. An example of this phrase is, hey Debbie. Why is Ed hanging out with Laura? He could get a much better girlfriend. Save your breath Alexa. He has been in love with her for a long time. To say it another way, there's no reason to talk about why Ed is dating Laura, because he is clearly in love with her. To summarize, save your breath means that there is no use talking about it. Great. Now let's look at some movie clips for examples of this phrase. Oh no! Oh no! Oh. Ah. Great. Way to go, Seville. Ah. Me? Dare you! Save your breath, Dave. They'll come back for me. In this clip, Dave and Ian have fallen overboard from the cruise ship. Dave is screaming for the ship to come back. Of course the people on the ship cannot hear him. Ian says to Dave, save your breath. He means that Dave should stop screaming at the ship. With all due respect, your rottenness, couldn't we just wait for a real storm? Save your breath, Iago. Faster! In this clip, Jafar and Iago are trying to create some kind of storm. Iago has to do a lot of work for this to happen, and so he asked Jafar wouldn't it be easier to wait for a real storm. Jafar says to Iago, save your breath and keep working. This means that Jafar wants Iago to stop talking and keep working on making the storm. Yes, almighty oh evil one!
Save your breath, Sid. You know humans can't talk. Diego, you're okay? In this clip, Diego and Sid are watching the baby that they saved be taken away by an adult human. Diego hears Sid say goodbye to the baby. Diego thinks that the humans cannot speak so he says, save your breath, to Sid. He says this because he feels it's useless to try to talk to someone who cannot speak. Nine lives, baby! Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, take the edge off. The meaning of this phrase is, to make something less intense, severe, or unpleasant. An example of this phrase is, some people drink alcohol to deal with stress, but I like to go jogging on the beach. It helps me take the edge off. To say it another way, when I feel stress in my life, I find that jogging helps me feel more relaxed. To summarize, take the edge off means to make something unpleasant feel less intense. Fantastic! Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. You know, I think this is one of those things where talking about it is not going to make it better. Want a glass of wine? So much. Okay. <laughs> See, we should have done this last night, you know? Have a little wine, take the edge off. In this clip, Penny is talking with Leonard about something stressful that happened the previous evening. They both don't want to talk about the issue now. Penny suggests that they have some wine to take the edge off. This means that she thinks the wine will make the stressful feelings weaker or less severe. Actually, ethyl alcohol inhibits electrical conduction in the nerve cells. I, I, I always forget to wear a deodorant and dance with my boss in front of everyone that I work with in a dress with no back. You look great, you smell great. Oh, God. But I could fire you if that'd take the edge off. I in this clip, Pepper is telling Tony that she feels uncomfortable dancing with him because he is her boss and all the people she works with are watching. She also says that she's wearing a dress that is very revealing. Since Tony can see that she's worried about what her co-workers think, he jokingly suggests firing her if that would take the edge off. This means that if he fired her, she would have less stressful feelings since she would no longer have co-workers. I don't, I actually don't think that you could tie your shoes without me. I take Quaaludes 10 to 15 times a day for my back pain, Adderall to stay focused, Xanax to take the edge off, pot to mellow me out, cocaine to wake me back up again, and morphine well, because it's awesome. In this clip, Jordan is talking to the camera and explaining all of the drugs that he takes. He says that he likes to take Xanax to take the edge off. He means that since he's got a stressful job, the Xanax helps reduce the intensity of the stressful feelings. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, more your speed. The meaning of this phrase is, suited to one's skills or abilities. An example of this phrase is, hey Henry, stop riding motorcycles. I think that riding small bicycles is more your speed. Another way to say this is, hey Henry, riding motorcycles is too difficult for you. I think small bicycles is more suited to your skill level. And just to summarize, more your speed is used when matching something to someone's skill level or character. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Hey, did you see me ride the pig? That took guts. Slow down, squirt. This party is for scared students only. Oh, sorry, killer, but you might want to hang out with someone a little more your speed. Uh, they look fun. In this clip, Sully is being invited to a special scare party. Mike also wants to go to the party. The leader of the group says that Mike really doesn't belong at the party and that Uzma Kappa is more your speed. The leader is saying that Uzma Kappa is more appropriate for his skill level as a scare student. The leader is also saying that Mike is not a good scare student and that his group of students are better than him. Oh, hey there! Wanna join Uzma Kappa? We 
We've got to get to the convention center. Should we get a taxi? Darn, I spent all my per diem. That's more our speed. <laughs> right. In this clip, the boss baby is talking with Tim about how to get to the convention center. The boss baby sees a limo and says, that's more our speed. The boss baby is saying that going in a limo is the manner in which they should travel because they are smart, successful, business-like people deserving of this form of transportation. Excuse me, ladies. Checkmate. Oh. Again? Obviously, you're not well suited for three-dimensional chess. Perhaps three-dimensional Candyland would be more your speed. Just reset the board. In this clip, Sheldon and Leonard are playing chess. Leonard looks unsure and moves a chess piece. Sheldon immediately wins the game and tells Leonard that maybe Candyland is more your speed. Sheldon is saying that maybe Leonard should only play games for young children and not play more difficult adult games. Sheldon is insulting Leonard. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, do the trick. The meaning of this phrase is, to solve a problem. To successfully achieve a result. An example of this phrase is, well, Nancy, I think you're under a lot of stress. I think simply getting more sleep should do the trick. To say it another way, I think that if you get more sleep, you'll begin feeling a lot better. And to summarize, do the trick means a way to fix something or successfully do something. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. You're sure? If I give this to my mom, it will change my fate. Oh, 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 trust me. It'll do the trick, dearie. In this clip, Merida is buying a potion that she wants to give to her mother. Merida believes that if her mother drinks the potion, her mother won't make her get married. Merida asks the witch if this will work. The witch says that it will do the trick. The witch is saying that the potion will succeed in solving her problem. It will work well. Deedee. Expect delivery of your purchase within a f I believe you will recover shortly. Hmm, that's good news. Uh, allow me, doctor. I'll take care of everything. Twice daily should do the trick. In this clip, Rowena has given the king a potion that has made him sick. A doctor comes to help the king. The doctor gives some of his medicine to the king and says that it should do the trick. The doctor is saying that if the king takes the medicine, it will solve the problem that he is having with his health. The doctor does not know that Rowena is poisoning the king. Your Highness. Tomorrow? How are you going to sleep? I don't know. <laughs> what, do you want some Xanax? I don't think that's for sleeping. Yeah. No, I think I'll just have a glass of warm milk. That'll do the trick. <laughs> In this clip, Ryan is attending a dinner the night before his little sister's wedding. Julie's friend asks if she wants some Xanax to help her sleep. Julie says no that she'll drink some warm milk instead. Julie says the milk should do the trick. She means that the milk should solve her problem with sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, eye for an eye. The meaning of this phrase is, a person who treats somebody else badly should be treated in the same way. An example of this phrase is, I know that my neighbor killed my dog. Well, has he ever heard of an eye for an eye? I am angry. To say it another way, my neighbor never liked my dog and I know he killed it. Maybe I should kill his dog. And to summarize, an eye for an eye means when someone wants revenge after they feel like they have been attacked. Excellent. 
Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. It wouldn't be breakfast without him. Especially since his daddy wiped out half our pack and wears our skin to keep warm. An eye for an eye. Don't you think? In this clip, two saber-toothed tigers are talking about killing a human baby. They are angry with the humans because they killed half of their pack. They say the humans now walk around wearing tiger skins. Now they want revenge, so they say it's an eye for an eye. This means that they feel that they can kill a human baby because the humans killed many of the tigers in their pack. Let's show that human what happens when he messes with sabers. And the leafman took him from me. So I took something of theirs. It's basic etiquette. An eye Ow! for an eye. Ow! In this clip, Mandrake kidnaps Mub and Grub. Mandrake wants revenge because the leafman killed his son. Mandrake tells them that what he's doing is fair because it's an eye for an eye. Mandrake means that since the leafman killed his son, it is totally fair for him to kill some leafmen. Jerk! I'm glad, Callahan. But you know you're an endangered species. This is the age of lapsed responsibilities and defeated justice. Today an eye for an eye means only for caught. In this clip, Jennifer is talking to a police detective, Harry. She had previously been attacked by a group of men and now she wants revenge. She wants to hurt those men. She thinks that people currently think an eye for an eye is only acceptable if the police catch the criminals. She really wants to hurt the men that previously attacked her. And even then it's an indefinite postponement and uh, let's settle out of court. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, doesn't stand a chance. The meaning of this phrase is, to have or not have the possibility of something to happen or be successful. An example of this phrase is, we are a great volleyball team. That other team didn't stand a chance against us. To say it another way, we are a great team together. That other team didn't have the possibility of winning. To summarize, doesn't stand a chance means that someone doesn't feel they have the possibility to be successful. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. No, 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 man, 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 man. Please, I'm begging you. I need him. What, a good-looking guy like you? No, you say that, but you don't mean it. No, seriously, look at you. Oh, those ladies, they don't stand a chance. In this clip, Sid is talking to Manny about borrowing the baby to impress some women. The women had previously told him how much they liked him for taking care of a baby. Manny is being sarcastic when he tells Sid that he's so good-looking that any woman wouldn't stand a chance. Manny is saying that Sid is so handsome that all women will not be able to resist him. But Manny doesn't really think this. You have a very cruel sense of humor. How'd you get out? I got broke. Bonnie found me, took me home. Other toys, they weren't so lucky. It ain't right what Lotso done. New toys, they don't stand a chance. In this clip, Chuckles is recalling the reason Lotso became the boss of Sunnyside and why he became so evil. Chuckles says that new toys at Sunnyside don't stand a chance. Chuckles is saying that new toys will not have the opportunity to be treated fairly because of Lotso. Look, this is stupid. I thought you were going to teach me how to fight like you. I don't stand a chance. In this clip, Pi is talking with Nerissa about how he can defeat a shark named Troy. Pike thinks that Nerissa has lied about teaching him how to fight. He says, I don't stand a chance. Pi means that he doesn't feel that he has a chance to beat Troy in a fight. He thinks the wise turtle has lied to him. Hey! Get away from there! That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. 
The name of this phrase is, c'est la vie. It comes from the French language. The meaning of this phrase is, that's life. And sometimes you can't do anything to change it. An example of this phrase is, we just finished painting the room, and now you want to change the color? Oh well, c'est la vie. To say it another way, after we just finished painting the room, you want to change the color? Oh well, that's life. To summarize, c'est la vie means, sometimes life is unpredictable. You just have to accept it. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. Well, if that's all you desire, then be on your way. I was going to offer you something worth 1,000 crowns would have made you rich beyond belief, and that wasn't even the best part. <laughs> oh, well, say la vie. In this clip, God Hell is talking to some thieves. She has just given them the crown that they wanted. But then she tells them they are stupid for only wanting one crown. She says, c'est la vie. This means she is saying, oh well, that's life. If you're not smart enough to see this wonderful opportunity, that's unfortunate for you. Enjoy your crown! Well, if you looked at me with those flashing eyes before I was involved, c'est la vie. In this clip, Wilson is talking to Dr. House about a relationship Wilson had with a woman. Wilson tries to explain his thoughts to House, but his words only make House angry, and he glares at Wilson. Wilson says that if he had seen Dr. House's glaring look before his relationship with the woman, well, c'est la vie. Wilson is saying that if he had seen Dr. House's disapproval months before, he might have done things differently, but he doesn't really care and doesn't want to think about it. And I use the French because you're an ass. Soak it in because it's the last you'll ever see. Say la vie, mon ami, I'm so shiny. In this clip, Tomatoa has stolen Maui's hook and starts singing to Moana and Maui about how wonderful he is. He can see that Maui is not strong now and sings that Moana will never see him again. Then he says, C'est la vie. He is saying that in life, things like this happen and it's nothing to worry about. Now we eat you, so prepare your final plea. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, drop it. The meaning of this phrase is, to stop talking about something. An example of this phrase is, honey, I just said that I didn't like that TV show. That's all. Why are you so angry? Can we just drop it? To say it another way, there's no reason to be so angry about a TV show. Can we just stop talking about it? To summarize, drop it means to not want to continue talking about something. Great. Now let's look at some movie clips for examples of this phrase. Are you hiding something? Never mind, donkey. Oh, this is another one of those onion things, isn't it? No, this is one of those drop it and leave it alone thing. In this clip, Shrek is telling Donkey that he doesn't want to talk about what is happening to him. Donkey wants to know what Shrek is hiding, but Shrek tells him to drop it. Shrek is telling Donkey to stop asking questions about this because he doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, why don't you want to talk about it? Why do you want to talk about it? Stop! I'll stop if you just explain it to me because I don't... Would you please just drop all it? Alright, alright, fine, 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 fine. Consider it dropped. It's dropped. It's on the ground. Good. This is the opening scene of the movie, and Wolf wants to know why Snake doesn't want to celebrate his birthday. Snake doesn't like birthdays and tells Wolf to drop it. Snake is telling Wolf to stop asking him why he doesn't like birthdays because he doesn't want to talk about it. But I mean, come on, everybody loves birthdays. You got decorations, you got balloons, you got parties. Yes, it did, and I'm telling you, you're wrong. How'd you do me? Did you mark her? Or was it the other way around? Did she get you to do her any favors? Nathan, you're a 
online. Drop it. It's under control. In this clip, Nathan suspects that Bishop's new girlfriend might be a spy. Nathan asks questions about how they met. Bishop becomes annoyed and tells Nathan to drop it. Bishop is telling Nathan that he is not being fair and that he should stop asking questions about his new girlfriend. I said I'll drop the lawsuit, so let's just drop the whole thing. Sugar, lemon, or both? <clears throat> both, Mrs. Mulray. Yes, Mr. I don't want to drop it. In this clip, Mrs. Mulray tells Jake that she now wants to stop the lawsuit. She wants to stop the entire investigation. Jake quickly tells Mrs. Mulray that he doesn't want to drop it. Jake is telling Mrs. Mulray that he will not stop his investigation about her husband and wants to talk with him. I better talk to your husband about this. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, eat your heart out. The meaning of this phrase is, to feel overwhelming sorry, envy, or jealousy. An example of this phrase is, well, my online company is really taking off. To all those people that doubted me. Eat your heart out. To say it another way. Many people told me that I couldn't succeed working online. They were wrong and I hope they feel envious of me. To summarize, eat your heart out means to want attention for something you have done and possibly create envy of it. Fantastic. Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. Hey, McQueen! Eat your heart out. Oh, Mater, let me get this straight. I can go when this road is done. That's the deal, right? In this clip, Lightning McQueen is having a bad dream about his competitor, Chick Hicks. In his dream, he sees Chick surrounded by beautiful women and Chick says, McQueen, eat your heart out. In the dream, Chick is telling McQueen he hopes that McQueen is envious because he is having so much success while McQueen is gone. Hmm. Yeah. A work of art. Last supper, eat your heart out. Mm. In this clip, one of Marge's paintings has won first prize. It's a painting of Homer in his underwear, sitting on the sofa. Homer is very happy. He says, Last supper, eat your heart out. Homer is referring to Leonardo da Vinci's very famous painting, The Last Supper. He is saying Da Vinci and the art experts should be envious of Marge's painting of himself because it's so good. Tell me you got that. I got it, I got it. Hit your heart on Channel 5. In this clip, a reporter is amazed at the explosion he has just witnessed. He knows that it's an amazing story. He asks his cameraman if he captured the explosion with his camera. The cameraman says, yes. He is very happy and says, Channel 5, eat your heart out. He's saying that he hopes his competitor, Channel 5, is envious of the story and video clip that everyone will be watching on his channel. We've had an update on the terrorist takeover of the Nakatomi buildings. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, nice touch. The meaning of this phrase is, to add some kind of nice detail to something. If someone adds a little humor to the end of a speech, you might say, hey, that joke at the end of your speech was a nice touch. If someone adds a special message onto your birthday cake, you might say, Well, that message on the cake really was a nice touch. Another example of this phrase is, Hey Cindy, I love how you chose a wider brush for this part. It's such a nice touch. 
Another way to say this is, hey Cindy, by using a wider brush, you added that little extra detail that makes this painting so much better. And just to summarize, nice touch means a minor or noticeable detail that makes something so much better. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. Did you see how strong I was? There probably isn't a jar in this world I can't open. You were positively heroic, my dear. I especially loved how you saved all those people on the bridge. It was a nice touch. Wasn't she amazing, Link? In this clip, Susan is talking with Dr. Cockroach and Bob about her sudden increase in strength. Dr. Cockroach compliments her about saving all the people on the bridge. He said it was a nice touch. Dr. Cockroach is saying that Susan's overall strength is impressive and the fact that she saved all those people on the bridge is an added detail that makes her strength that much more impressive. No one's ever done anything like this for me. Oh. It, it is too much, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Bo. I thought it was a nice touch. <laughs> Pretend you did not see that. In this clip, the prince is trying to impress the princess before they return to their human form. The prince prepares a nice dinner and tries to dress up by putting on a bow tie. He decides the bow tie is too much, but when he asks Bo to go away, Bo says, I thought it was a nice touch. Bo is saying that he thought the added detail of a bow tie was a good idea and helpful to the prince. There, and I've got a souvenir Swiss snowing village. What's that for? It's for Dana, Stoop. You I know, bring it. your kid home a gift, you got know, the bad thing. That's right. Nice touch. Yeah. All right. Pick me up tomorrow at 8. In this clip, the two funny spies, Gib and Harry, have just finished a government assignment. Harry's wife thinks he works for a computer company and is at a convention. Gibb says he bought Harry a souvenir so that his family will truly believe he was just at a convention. Harry thinks that this is a nice touch. Harry is saying that Gibb thought of an additional minor detail to help prevent his family from knowing he is a spy. Okay, sweet face, give him a nice smile. Come on. That's a nice touch. You know, I swear, if he told me I rode out of town ten minutes ago, I'd believe him. In this clip, Butch and Sundance have instructed an old man to tell a group of cowboys that they have left town. The elderly man holds his hand to his ear to make the act seem more believable. Butch says this is a nice touch. Butch is saying that when the old man holds his hand to his ear as though he cannot hear well, he is adding a nice detail to the lie so that the cowboys will believe what he is saying. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, off the chart. The meaning of this phrase is, to exceed expectations or to be far higher or better than normal. This phrase can be used two ways. One example is, wow. I love this concert. It's off the charts. This means that the concert is amazing. Far better than was expected. Another way this phrase is used is, hey John. I don't know what's happening, but your pulse rate is off the charts. This means that John's pulse rate is far higher than normal. Hmm. I wonder why. Another example of this phrase is, Hey guys, I think we're on to something. The amount of copies that this virus is shedding is off the charts. To say it another way, this is amazing. The amount of copies that this virus is shedding is far more than normal. And to summarize, off the chart means to be beyond expectations, to be amazing. Now let's look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. He is so hot. Boom, that's it. You in. You're no Eva. But 
You're awesome. We'll see you at the performance tomorrow night. Everyone from the village is coming. It's going to be off the charts. Everyone? In this clip, Nigel has just passed an audition to be in a big show. The Bluebird says everyone from the village is coming to the show and that the event should be off the chart. The bird is saying that the event is going to be extremely popular because everyone will be going to it. I mean, this doesn't make any, I mean, it makes sense. Oh! <laughs> Mary Catherine! Mary Catherine, you're not going to believe these readings. They're off the charts. I had the wind and I had the rain and lightning and the birds were flying in a storm. In this clip, Mary Catherine's father is coming home after taking some measurements while out in the forest. He is very surprised at the measurements and says that they are off the chart. He is saying that the measurements are surprising because they are beyond what the normal range would be. You know, that instinct to leap without looking, that was his nature too. And in my opinion, some Starfleet's lost. Why are you talking to me, man? Because I looked up your file while you were drooling on the floor. Your aptitude tests are off the charts, so what is it? In this clip, Pike is talking with Kirk about working for Starfleet, just as his father had done. Pike says that he checked on Kirk's background and noticed that his aptitude test scores were off the charts. Pike is saying that Kirk's test scores show that he is beyond the normal range of intelligence for a new recruit. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is déjà vu. This comes from the French language and means already seen. The meaning of this phrase is a strange feeling that you have already experienced what is happening now. I might say this phrase in this scene, this is so strange. I feel like I've been standing in this location previously at some point in the past. Talk about déjà vu. Another example of this phrase is, this is weird. I have this strange feeling that we've had this meeting before. Déjà vu, huh? To say it another way, I really feel like we've had this same meeting before. Everyone was here, wearing the same things and sitting in the same places. It's strange. And to summarize, déjà vu means, when you sense that you have seen or done something before. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. That's how I feel. Really? Would you like to try some white chocolate? Yuck. Don't make me sick. No white chocolate. There is something so familiar about this. Hmm? Do you ever have deja vu? Didn't you just ask me that? In this clip, two newscasters, Rita and Phil, are talking. Rita feels like their conversation has happened before and asks Phil if he has ever had deja vu. Rita is asking Phil if he has ever had the feeling that he is repeating an experience that he previously had. <laughs> hey, deja vu. What did you say? Nothing just a little deja vu. What did you say? What happened? A black cat went past us and then another that looked just like it. In this clip, Neo tells Trinity and Agent Smith that he feels like he has just experienced déjà vu. Neo is telling them that he feels like he has just repeated an experience where he saw a black cat and then saw the same black cat again, repeating what had happened earlier. Let go! Save yourself! Come on, let go! Never! Are you crazy? Don't bring both of us down! Let go! Deja vu, Blue. Nigel! In this clip, Blue is trying to save everyone by taking a bomb away from them. Nigel is trying to catch Blue, his enemy. Nigel has tried to kill Blue many times. He says, Deja vu, Blue. Nigel is asking Blue if this attack feels like the same attack that Nigel has made previously. Great work. Let's move on to the next phrase. 
The name of this phrase is, a bone to pick with. The meaning of this phrase is, to be annoyed with someone about something. If you've got, a bone to pick with someone, you are usually angry and need to talk about something. An example of this phrase is, hey, I've got a bone to pick with you Greg. I've been standing here for 10 minutes and you've done nothing but stare at that phone. Who are you chatting with anyway? To say it another way, I'm really annoyed with you at the moment. You've been staring at that phone and haven't said one word to me for 10 minutes. To summarize, a bone to pick with means that someone has a complaint that needs to be discussed. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some movie clips that provide examples of this phrase. That reminds me, I have a bone to pick with you. What? You and I made a pact that if either of us ever got a hot girlfriend, that person would have his girlfriend hook the other guy up with one of her girlfriends. In this clip, Howard tells Leonard that he has a bone to pick with him. Howard says that years ago, they made an agreement that if Leonard ever got a beautiful girlfriend, he would request that his girlfriend introduce one of her pretty friends to Howard. When Howard says, a bone to pick with, he is saying that he is annoyed with Leonard for not fulfilling the promise. Oh, what is it this time? We got a bone to pick with you. I'll handle this. Scar, there's no food, no water. Yeah, it's dinner time, and we ain't got no stinking entree. In this clip, the hyenas are telling Scar, the lion, that they have a bone to pick with him. They say that they are hungry because they have no food or water and want to know what he is doing about it. The hyenas use the phrase, a bone to pick with, because they are annoyed with Scar for not taking care of the other animals. <laughs> I have a bone to pick with you, sir. <laughs> Hi, Sheldon. Hi, Stephanie. I'm sorry I'm late, but your companion left the most indecipherable invitation. <laughs> In this clip, Sheldon arrives late to the theater and says that he has a bone to pick with Leonard. Sheldon is saying that he is annoyed with Leonard because the message that he left Sheldon was not clear. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, at the end of the day. The meaning of this phrase is, after everything has been considered. At the end of the day is used to summarize the conclusion after all of the events that occurred previously. An excellent example of this is, although we argued and fought and, at times, refused to talk to one another, we always knew that, at the end of the day, we would always have a meaningful friendship. This means that although there were many difficult and challenging times, we knew that our friendship would endure. Another example of this phrase is, well, this project required that I work with some horrible people, but, at the end of the day, it was very profitable. To say it another way, although I had to work with some people that I didn't like, I did make a lot of money when the project was completed. To summarize, at the end of the day means what happens after a long series of events. Excellent. Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. Nice knowing you, kid. I thought it was a show, not a slaughter. They're just robots, son. I thought you liked robots. I do. But at the end of the day, they're just junk waiting to happen. <laughs> huh? I know. Some of those more advanced ones from Metro City are... In this clip, Astro is talking with Ham Egg about how he is using robots to destroy one another. Astro asks Ham Egg if he likes robots. Ham Egg says yes, but at the end of the day, they all end up as junk. Hammeg means that after you consider everything, the robots are just pieces of metal that will eventually be junk. Hammeg is saying that although he loves robots, they are not living beings and should be treated as things and not as people. 
Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. There's a silver lining to that too, honey, because they said eventually, eventually everyone's gonna have to give information on this case, so at the end of the day it might not even be a factor, you know? Well, that's good news, right? In this clip, Jordan is talking with his wife, Naomi. He is telling her that he may have to betray his friends. He says that, at the end of the day, everyone's going to have to provide information to the government. Jordan is saying this because after everyone is interviewed, they will all feel compelled to provide information. Jordan is trying to explain why betraying his friends is really not so bad. A bunch of glorified crack addicts, really. They take that information, they pretend to understand it, and they bet it against some other jock halfway around the world who, you know, if he wasn't doing this, he'd be at an OTB somewhere, putting it all on number seven, you know? So I... At the end of the day, one guy wins, one guy loses. In this clip, Seth is talking about the life of a stockbroker living in New York. He is explaining that stockbrokers from all over the world are gambling against one another and, at the end of the day, there is always going to be someone who wins and someone who loses. Seth is saying, after you consider everything, stockbrokers are just people gambling against one another. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, rip off. The meaning of this phrase is, to cheat or to steal. You might use this phrase when you go to a baseball game. I can't believe it. It cost me $15 to buy this little bag of French fries. What a rip off. This means that the cost of the French fries far exceeded its value. A person feels cheated. An example of this phrase is, hey, look at that guy over there. He's trying to rip off that car. We should call the police. To say it another way, we should call the police because that man is trying to steal that car. To summarize, rip off means to cheat someone or to steal. Great. Now let's look at some movie clips for examples of this phrase. You know something, buddy, you're right. I'm gonna turn over a new leaf. <laughs> Good for you, sir. That's the spirit. See, he doesn't really want to hurt anybody. Uh-huh. <laughs> right after I rip off this lady's purse. <laughs> of course. Now come on, lady, hand it over. In this clip, a thief is trying to take Lois Lane's purse. He tells Clark that he's ripping her off. When the thief says this, he means that he's stealing her purse. The exact meaning of rip off is to steal or to cheat. He put all his hopes and dreams into this little butcher shop he ran on the Lower East Side of New York. You know what happened? Every customer who walked into that butcher shop and asked for a pound of liver got ripped off. <laughs> In this clip, Howard is talking to Sheldon about his great-grandfather. Howard explains how his great-grandfather owned a butcher shop and ripped off everyone that shopped there. Howard is saying that his grandfather cheated the customers that shopped at his shop. Look, with Kitty's skill, your sword, and my brain, we've got a fighting chance here. Puss, come on. You of all people know that nobody's ever ripped off the giant's castle and lived to tell the tale? You want to survive? You need a plan. In this clip, Humpty is talking with Puss about ripping off the giant's castle, something that has never been done. Humpty is saying that with Kitty's skills, Puss's sword, and his brain, they may be able to steal things from the giant. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, go to bat for. The meaning of this phrase is, to support someone when they need help. This phrase can often be heard when lawyers are talking with their clients. Now don't worry about anything while in the courtroom. I'm here to go to bat for you, no matter what happens. Another example of this phrase is, remember Kelly, in the meeting you need to talk about these points right here. However, 
Don't worry, because if you have trouble with anyone in the meeting, I'll go to bat for you. To say it another way, don't worry about the meeting, because if you have trouble with anyone in the meeting, I'll be there to support you. To summarize, go to bat for means to help someone, defend someone, to support someone. Fantastic! Now let's look at some movie clips for more examples of this phrase. Oh, I'm very grateful. Then why are you locking us out all of a sudden? Well, it's been sort of rough the past few weeks, what with my cold and... Like that. We went to bat for you, and now you won't play ball with us. Well, after all, it's my apartment. In this clip, Baxter is talking with a group of men that he works with. The men remind Baxter that they went to bat for him to help him get a promotion at work that includes his new office. The men are saying that they supported him regarding his promotion and now they want him to share his apartment. Congratulations, you're sergeants again. City self-insured. Well, I thought they were going to make us president there. Thank you, Thank you. And by the way, Grandpa, you're the chief mm -hmm. one. He went to bat for you with the INS and they're going to give asylum to the Hans. In this clip, Captain Murphy is telling Martin and Roger that they have their old jobs back as sergeants. He also tells Roger that the chief went to bat for him and persuaded the INS to give asylum to a needy family. Captain Murphy is saying that the chief supported Roger's interest in helping the Hong family. In fact, I put in some paperwork already to have his folks come down and see him. I can't do that. You want him to hit? Do it. You know the game better than most. And I'll always go to bat for you. I just want to make sure you're up for it. In this clip, Pete is talking with Gus about helping a baseball player. Pete says that he'll always go to bat for Gus. Pete is saying that he'll always support what Gus believes in because he knows that Gus is very good at his job. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, change of pace. The meaning of this phrase is, a change in the usual activities, or to do something different than before. An example of this phrase is, it's so nice getting away from the city, and getting out to the countryside. What a great change of pace. The dogs are saying, that changing the location of where they typically walk is enjoyable and fun. Another example of this phrase is, normally, we go shopping on Friday evenings, but tonight we're watching a scary movie. What a great change of pace. The woman is saying that doing something different, watching a movie, on this day, is fun. The last example of this phrase is, I know that you normally enjoy drinking white wine, but I found this great Merlot I want you to try. It'll be a nice change of pace. The man is saying that trying a bottle of red wine might be a fun change. And just to summarize, change of pace means a temporary variation in a normal routine. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. And this platter doesn't look all that happy to me. It looks bored. <laughs> The board platter. I thought Vi would want to change a pace from drive-in food. I like drive-in food. Does this mean vegetables? A balanced diet means... In this clip, Bob takes his children, Violet and Dash, out to dinner. Bob explains that he thinks Vi would like a change of pace compared to drive-in food. Bob is saying that he thinks that Violet would like to sit down in a restaurant rather than eat food that you buy at a fast food restaurant. This would be a change in the way they normally eat. Wondering if uh, you know you'd like to come over to my house for dinner, go uh, oh, payback for all the crummy things Bart has done to your school. Well, a home cooked meal would be a nice change of pace. I'd be delighted. In this clip, Homer invites the principal of Bard's school to have dinner at his house. The principal says that eating a home-cooked meal would be a nice change of pace. 
The principal is saying that eating a home-cooked meal would be a nice change from what he usually eats. We can only assume that the principal does not normally eat many home-cooked meals. Well, who do you think I did it for? I did it for us. Us? Yes, that's right. Do you know what he was planning for next Friday night's poker game as a change of pace? Do you have any idea? What? A luau. An Hawaiian luau. Roast pork, fried rice, spare ribs, and... In this clip, Oscar is explaining to his friends why he got angry at his roommate, Felix. Oscar says that Felix was planning a crazy Hawaiian dinner for their next poker game as a change of pace. Oscar is saying that Felix wanted to change what the group normally does when they have a poker game. But Oscar thinks that this idea is very bad. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, go the extra mile. The meaning of this phrase is, to make a special effort to do or to achieve something. An example of this phrase is, wow. I can't believe that my owner bought me a boat for my birthday. He went the extra mile this time. The dog is saying that he feels his owner has made a special effort to provide him with a great birthday gift. Another example of this phrase is, look at all this food. You really went the extra mile this time, Gloria. The guest is saying that Gloria made a special effort to make a wonderful dinner for everyone. The last example of this phrase is, when Agnes cleans her house against COVID, she sure does go the extra mile. The speaker is saying that Agnes has done more than normal when cleaning against the COVID virus. And to summarize, go the extra mile means to do more than is required or expected to do. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. You can't fire Peter, sir. And why's that? Because you need him. Sure, companies need some people to work hard and go the extra mile, but more than that, they need guys like Peter. Regular guys who are happy to do a thankless job for a mediocre salary. In this clip, Cleveland is telling the manager that he can't fire Peter. He acknowledges that companies do need people that go the extra mile, but they also need guys like Peter too. Cleveland is saying that although companies do need people that will work extra hard, they also need people like Peter. In this case, go the extra mile means when someone works harder than the average employee. I, how'd you get them so shiny? Oh, I uh, buffed them with turtle wax. <laughs> the man down at Pet Boys says from now on the urine should just beat up and roll right off. <laughs> Way to go the extra mile. Your Mima would be proud. You in this clip, Sheldon has been asked to shine all of Howard's belt buckles. After doing the task, Howard says that Sheldon did a great job and thanks him for going the extra mile. Howard is thanking Sheldon for completing the job far better than would be normally expected. Wait a minute, is that actually a check for him? No, it's a giant novelty item for winning the lottery. You're just standing really far away. Of all the people to go the extra mile for, why this guy? I don't know. He just kind of smells good. And... In this clip, Dr. House is helping another man pay for his house mortgage. Wilson asks why, of all the people Dr. House knows, he's going the extra mile for this person. Wilson is asking Dr. House why he is being particularly generous with this man. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, rock the boat. The meaning of this phrase is, when you do or say something that will upset people or cause problems. An example of this phrase is, I've got plenty of food and a great home. However, I don't have a girlfriend. I'd like to ask the people here to find one for me, but I don't want to rock the boat. The iguana wants someone to find him a girlfriend, but he doesn't want to upset anyone. Another example of this phrase is, 
We had a neighborhood watch meeting and some people suggested some weird ideas. However, I didn't say anything because I didn't want to rock the boat. The person is saying that although she doesn't agree with people in the meeting, she won't say anything because she doesn't want to upset anyone. The last example of this phrase is, I know that you mean well Henry, but you keep introducing ideas that are upsetting a lot of people. Why must you always be rocking the boat? The woman is telling the man that his ideas are causing problems for other members of the company. And to summarize, rock the boat means to cause problems for other members of a group. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Wait, won't you say, Lise? Oh, Bart, don't you see? This is what psychologists call overcompensation. Mom is wracked with guilt because her marriage is failing. Hey, don't rock the boat, ma'am. Whatever it is, we're making out like bandits. In this clip, Bart is telling Lisa how happy he is with the great lunch their mother made. Lisa is not happy because she thinks that her mother is doing this because she is so sad. Bart doesn't care why it's happening. He tells Lisa, don't rock the boat. Bart is telling Lisa to not get involved with understanding why this is happening, but just enjoy the great lunches. Bart doesn't want Lisa to say anything to their mother that might stop her from making more great lunches. They took a risk staying here. So what? Still in your mind to separate them. Yeah, but there is nothing that we can do, is there? Well, not right now. It's not a good time to rock the boat. Why? Because you're at the center of a malpractice suit? Something like that, yeah. In this clip, Neela is not happy that the government is separating a mother from her baby. Simon says he agrees, but there's nothing that they can do. Neela says that at this time, it's not a good idea to rock the boat. Neela is saying that at this time, it is dangerous for her to do anything that might upset people at the hospital. Hang on over there. What for? Just hang on. <sighs> Big drug dealer on his way to prison. Gunfight in airport. Every controller in the coffee shop getting beeped and hauling ass and you rocking the boat. Connection? Come on, McLean. Just a few words. Okay. In this clip, Samantha, a reporter, is trying to figure out what is happening at the airport. She tells John that there are a lot of things happening and that she thinks he is rocking the boat. Samantha is saying that she thinks that John is upsetting a lot of people at the airport and wants to know why. Because John is making people angry at the airport, he is rocking the boat. Great work! Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, rule of thumb. The meaning of this phrase is, a rule that you follow that is based on experience. An example of this phrase is, hey Morris, you know, as a rule of thumb, most cat owners think we are their pets. They don't understand that, they, are our pets. Weird, huh? Another example of this phrase is, as a rule of thumb, if it snows more than five inches, all schools will be closed. This means that based on practical experience, cities tend to close their schools if greater than five inches of snow falls. The last example of this phrase is, as a rule of thumb, if I drink more than two cups of coffee each day, I get nervous. The woman is saying that based on practical experience, if she drinks more than two cups of coffee, she will get nervous. To summarize, rule of thumb means a method of doing something based on experience and common sense. Excellent! Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. And you said there'd never be enough pasta for the three of us. <laughs> I stand corrected. You know, <clears throat> Italian housewives have a rule of thumb. A handful of dry pasta, about an inch in diameter, is sufficient for each person. In this clip, Sheldon is talking to Leonard about cooking pasta. Sheldon says that Italian women believe that, 
as a rule of thumb, an inch of pasta is enough for each person. Sheldon is saying that Italian women have a theory that normally, an inch of pasta is enough for each person. Therefore, rule of thumb has an equivalent meaning to having a theory or a belief. A uh, good rule of thumb is two-year salary, sir. Try this. <laughs> I can't afford that. I'm an educator. See you more. I'll take it. In this clip, Bart is helping Principal Skinner choose an engagement ring for a woman that he likes. The salesman says that as a rule of thumb, a man should spend two years' salary on an engagement ring. The salesman is saying that, in general, most people agree that a person should spend the equivalent of two years' salary when they are buying an engagement ring. Therefore, rule of thumb is a way of saying the general belief of what a person should do in a situation. I'm perfectly comfortable speaking to small groups. I cannot speak to large crowds. What to you is a large crowd? Any group big enough to trample me to death. <laughs> General rule of thumb is 36 adults or 70 children. In this clip, Sheldon is telling his friends that he doesn't feel comfortable talking to large groups of people. When asked, what is a large group, Sheldon says, as a rule of thumb, 36 adults or 70 children. Sheldon is saying that he has a theory that, in general, talking to more than 36 adults or 70 children is difficult. That's terrific. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, cut me some slack. The meaning of this phrase is, to treat someone in a less harsh or critical way. An example of this phrase is, again, everyone goes out to dinner and I'm assigned to guard duty. When are they going to cut me some slack? The dog is saying, when is everyone going to be considerate of him when they all go out to have fun? Another example of this phrase is, okay officer. Yes, technically I don't exactly own this vehicle, but can't you cut me some slack? The man is acknowledging that he doesn't own the car he's driving, but he's asking the officers to allow him to leave. Another example of this phrase is, Okay, so I ate some of your food. Can't you cut me some slack? I was hungry. The white cat is asking the darker cat to not be so angry just because he ate his food. To summarize, cut me some slack means to be more lenient with someone. Excellent. Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. Look, I'm a cop, LAPD. How about a little team spirit, huh? Well, I was in LA once. Hated it. Well, I can understand. I don't like it much of myself. Hey! That's a plastic bender up there. Take it easy. Off. I'm doing my job. Right. Cut me some slack, will you? Look, I used to be a cop in New York City. I don't in this clip, John McClain is talking to a police officer about not punishing him for parking his car illegally. He asks the police officer to cut him some slack. John is asking the officer to be lenient with him and not punish him. Cut me some slack means to ask someone to treat them less harshly or critically. You're new on Harry's team, aren't you? Yes. So what makes you think the slack I cut him in any way translates to you? L let me show you what we got. In this clip, the boss is angry at Harry and his team about a mission that didn't go as planned. When a new member, Faisal, tries to defend Harry, the boss gets angry and says, What makes you think the slack I cut him translates to you? The boss is asking Faisal why he thinks the leniency that he gives towards Harry will apply to him also. Fine, then we'll, uh, we'll make the turn at the next siding. Next siding's not for 10 miles. We do that, we're late. I don't run late. Just green sheet it and we'll move. Come on, we green sheet it and it's my ass. Cut me some slack. Your ass. You're a Colson. What the hell is that oh, supposed to that mean? You... In this clip, Will has made a mistake and is arguing with Frank about how to solve a problem. 
Frank's solution is to green sheet it, but Will doesn't want to do this because he will be in trouble. Will tells Frank to cut him some slack, but Frank doesn't want to help him. Will is asking Frank to not be so harsh and strict with him and allow him to solve the problem his way. All of us here at TD English hope that you're enjoying these videos, but we need your help. The YouTube algorithm doesn't really support us because we are a young channel. If you enjoyed these videos, please spread the word by copying the link to this video to Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, or any other form of social media that you use. We need our community of English learners to work together to allow us to produce more of this content. We also want to thank all of you for subscribing and helping us. It is greatly appreciated. You're doing great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is Wild Goose Chase. The meaning of this phrase is, when you waste time searching for something you have little chance of finding. An example of this phrase is, Myrtle, I know that you love strawberries, but I think looking for them this time of year is a wild goose chase. The goose is telling his wife that it is very unlikely that they will find strawberries growing outside in the winter. Another example of this phrase is, Many people think it's a wild goose chase, but I think that I can find some rare dinosaur bones in East Asia. The man is saying that although many people think that there are probably no dinosaur bones in East Asia, he disagrees. The last example of this phrase is, I love Edgar, but I think looking for evidence of Bigfoot is a wild goose chase. This means that I don't believe that Bigfoot exists, and I think that Edgar is wasting his time. To summarize, wild goose chase means, when you are looking for something that doesn't exist or you are unlikely to find. Great! Now let's look at some video clips for examples of this phrase. Excuse me, officers. This may sound like a wild goose chase, but I think I just saw... So what? Elvis. In this clip, John McClane thinks that he should report a famous criminal he thought that he saw recently. He tells the officers that this may be a wild goose chase. John is saying that he might be asking them to do a large search for someone that is not actually a criminal. A wild goose chase is looking for something that doesn't exist or cannot be found. A useless thing to do. For the love. Hey, Lincoln 30 to dispatch. 8030, go ahead. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. Over. But nobody has me fixed. In this clip, Sergeant Powell is calling into the police station on a report that he was asked to investigate. He explains that the report made to the police station turned out to be a wild goose chase. The sergeant is saying that investigating this report was a waste of time. He feels that he was looking for a crime that didn't exist. Um, um, a foolish old man has been drawn into a wild goose chase by a harpy in trousers and a nincompoop. In this clip, Rooster Cogburn is feeling very frustrated about a search that he has been hired to do. He says that he has been drawn into a wild goose chase. He is saying that he has been asked to look for someone that may not be anywhere near them. He thinks this job may be a complete waste of time. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, lost your touch. The meaning of this phrase is, to no longer be able to do something as well as you could before. An example of this phrase is, ah. She wants me to jump. I'll show her a jump. Yeah. I haven't lost my touch. 
that's for sure. The dog is saying that he still has the ability to jump very well. Another example of this phrase is, oh darling. You sure haven't lost your touch when making sandwiches. They look delicious. The woman is complimenting her husband on still having the ability to make a great sandwich. The last example of this phrase is, look at Tasha talking to that handsome man. She certainly hasn't lost her touch at flirting with cute guys. This means that Tasha has always been, and still is, skilled at talking with handsome men. To summarize, lost your touch means to lose your ability or talent that you once had. Fantastic! Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. We'll find all 12 signatures on it. I'm afraid we feel you've rather lost your touch. In this clip, Mr. Malfoy is delivering a letter of suspension to Professor Dumbledore. Malfoy says that the committee feels that Dumbledore has lost his touch. Malfoy means that the committee feels that Dumbledore has lost his abilities as a good professor. Lost your touch means to lose your special abilities at doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't lost the old touch? Watch this one. Cut the deck, but don't show me your card. In this clip, Howard is showing his son that he has a high level of skill playing cards. He shows him how he can shuffle the cards in a very skilled manner and then says he hasn't lost the old touch. Howard is saying that he has not lost his abilities to play cards over the years. He is still very skilled. This place is totaled. And we didn't wreck it. We're losing our touch, bro. In this clip, the playground that Manny built for his child has been destroyed. Typically, this is the kind of thing that Crash and Eddie would normally do. Since somebody did it before them, Crash says, we're losing our touch, bro. Crash is saying that since somebody did the destruction before them, they are losing their ability to destroy things before other animals do it. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, eat my dust. The meaning of this phrase is, people say this when they are confident that they will defeat another person in a competitive event. The person is usually bragging and mocking another person. They might be saying, Ha! Huh. I know that I am faster than you. You're going to eat my dust. They may just be trying to have some fun, or they might be seriously taunting another person. An example of this phrase is, All right, I'm going to take the lead on the very first turn and I'm not going to give it up. All of the other racers can eat my dust. I came here to win. The man is saying that he is confident the racers behind him will continue to stay behind him. He thinks he will win. Another example of this phrase is, I've got a brother and a sister, but neither of them can outrun me. They can eat my dust. The fast dog is saying that he is the fastest dog. His brother and sister will run slower than him every time. And just to summarize, eat my dust is said when a person thinks they will dominate another person in some kind of competition. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Ha! 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 Woo! My hooves are burning, yeah. baby! They are burning! <laughs> Oh, look at this, I got a tiptoe, I got a tiptoe. Eat my dust, dingo. <laughs> In this clip, a saber-toothed tiger is trying to catch an antelope. The tiger, Diego, is running well, 
but after a while, becomes exhausted. The antelope thinks that this is funny and taunts Diego. After this, the antelope says, eat my dust. The antelope is saying that he'll be moving away from Diego so fast, the only thing he will see is dust in the air. Take your place at the starting line! This is all about teamwork! Everybody stick together! I'm gonna beat you over that finish line. Get ready to eat my dust. Hey guys, should we huddle up? In this clip, Mike is in a competition. He's supposed to be a teammate with Sully, but, at the moment, they are angry with each other. Mike tells Sully that he's going to beat him over the finish line. Sully responds by saying that Mike should be ready to eat my dust. Sully is saying that Mike will be eating the dust he kicks up as he runs in front of him. Ah, eat my dust, racially stereotypical plumber! <laughs> That's not fair, I got stuck behind a tree. <laughs> and a cow and a penguin. In this clip, Sheldon is playing a car racing video game against Raj. Raj plays the game better than Sheldon, and as he is about to win, he says, eat my dust. Raj is saying that since Sheldon's car is behind his, he can eat the dust that his car is creating in front of him. People usually say this when they are happy to be finishing in front of someone when racing. Great. Let's move on to the next phrase. The name of this phrase is, show him the ropes. The meaning of this phrase is, to show someone how to do a particular job or task. If you were hired by a large company, you would definitely want to have someone show you the ropes as to how the company operates and what expectations they might have for you. In other words, you would want someone to explain to you the procedures used by the company and what the company expected you to do. An example of this phrase is, Hey Marge, don't even try teaching him. I tried to show him the ropes earlier. He didn't learn a thing. I think that dog is broken. The orange golden retriever is saying that he tried to teach the puppy some tricks earlier, but was unsuccessful. Another example of this phrase is, Hey Bobby! You see that new kid in the red shoes? He doesn't understand how to play on a team. Can you show him the ropes? The coach is asking Bobby to teach the new player about the fundamentals of how to play on a team. And to summarize, show him the ropes means to explain or demonstrate to another person how to do a job or activity. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Pop, pop, I can handle the reef. It's not a no, problem. No, no. We're gonna do this as a family. Frankie, I want you to take Lenny out, show him the ropes. Oh, come on, Pop. Son, you're gonna learn how to be a shark. In this clip, the Don wants his son, Lenny, to learn more about being a real shark. Since Lenny doesn't like violence and doesn't want to kill other creatures, the Don tells his other son, Frankie, to show him the ropes. The Don is telling Frankie that he should teach Lenny how to act like a real shark. Show him the ropes means to teach someone the proper way to do things. Don't blame me. Blame the high fuel costs, blame insurance premiums, blame technology. You know, you better watch yourself. You're a little too young to become a dinosaur. I'm not a dinosaur. I want you to show her the ropes. What do I know what goes on here? Get Ferguson to do it. In this clip, Craig is telling Ryan that he wants him to help Natalie. He wants Ryan to show her the ropes. Craig wants Ryan to teach Natalie how the system works in the office. Ryan doesn't want to do this. How many days do you have left? Three. Good, real good. Why, am I getting on your nerves? Oh, no. I mean, I really appreciate you showing me the ropes this week. Let me ride around in your nice, clean car. In this clip, Scott is riding in a car with David. 
Scott and David are police detectives. Scott is training David to replace him at his job. David says that he appreciates Scott showing him the ropes. David is saying that he appreciates that Scott is teaching him about the job. Excellent work. You've completed the video. We've reviewed 50 idiomatic phrases. Remember, it's almost impossible memorizing all these phrases after viewing this video one time. So try to revisit this video when you have free time and refresh your memory regarding these phrases. Here is a list of all the phrases in this video. The next 50 phrases will be uploaded soon, so please subscribe so you can be notified whenever we upload new videos.